Today we're going to talk about an invasive tree in the Lower Hudson Prism region called Norway Maple. And I'm standing here in a neighborhood because it's a, a great opportunity to show in the early May when we're filming this some of the differences between the invasive Norway and some of the uh, native maple trees and just how different they are in terms of timing of biological events like leaf out. So right behind me you can see a Norway Maple. And if you look up in the tree, again, this is at the beginning of May when growth is first starting to happen. The tree's really starting to fill in with green leaves. And over to my right here, you can see a native red maple. And again, the, the uh, branches are a little barer and just haven't really begun that like robust leaf out yet. This, so this is clearly giving Norway kind of a jump start on the growing season. And not only do they start growing out their leaves a little bit earlier, but they actually persist on this tree for much longer, giving it a long, longer growing season. The leaves tend to be a lot broader uh, than some of the, say, like red maple to my right, or even our native sugar maples, which I'll show you some of the differences between them. So on a big scale, we can see how Norways, which were brought to the United States in the mid 1700s as a really dense shade tree, and now is starting to escape into some of our natural areas. And you can see some of the qualities of early leaf out, broader leaves, and how it can start to outcompete some of our native uh, maples that we're trying to protect in our region. So let's take a closer look at some of the key ID features that distinguish N Norway maple from some of the other maples in our area. And I do want to point out that as we're, as we're looking a little bit closer, be sure to pay attention to my thumb so you get an idea for size and scale when we're comparing uh, leaf size and, and how to compare the, the different species. Here we are looking at the bark of a Norway maple. And in comparison in a second, when I show you the sugar maple, you can see that this bark is neatly patterned. The grooves are much more geometrically arranged. In other words, they're more straight up and down. There's a clear pattern to it, like more of an up and down nature to it. And you can see just how well filled in the leaves are above it at the beginning of May. But the bark is, is more patterned, deeply grooved, more up and down. Sugar maple, on the other hand, which you'll see in a second, is doesn't have this type of like clear arrangement of its bark. Here is a look at a Norway maple leaf. And this is at the beginning of May and look at how broad and how well grown out the leaf is already. If I zoom in a little bit closer, you will see that the edge comes to a tip. You see that tip that's coming out there right by my right by my finger where I'm moving my finger? So sugar maple is going to have a much more rounded end to it versus Norway maple. You've got these nice broad leaves and it has this tip that's coming off at the end versus sugar maple, which is going to be more rounded. Another way to tell is if I take it and I take off the leaf and I squeeze, you see that milky white substance that's coming out here. So if that that milky white okay is not going to be coming out of the sugar maples so that sticky white substance that's going to come off you see how it's even sticking to my finger there that is a clear indication that you've got a norway maple but again looking at the broadness of the leaf and if i look up this tree this is at the beginning of may look at how green that tree is in a second i'm going to show you for comparison just what a sugar maple looks like at the same time of year and why the invasive norway maple has such a competitive advantage so again looking at the pattern of the bark which is a clear up and down pattern the leaves with the milky sap broader leaves tips at the end so much much narrower pointed tips and look at the fullness of these leaves bigger darker more full in, more green at this time of year here is a look-alike alert. This is not Norway maple. In fact, this is a sugar maple. And you can see by the scale of my thumb, almost like probably two or three thumbs worth is going to be the length of this relative to the Norway maple that I just showed you. Um, it's just much smaller. It's still a little bit red. In fact, you know, this is greener than a lot of the sugar maples that I'm seeing out at the beginning of May right now. But really, it's a distinguishing feature from Norway is if you take a look, remember how Norway had that point? 
yes, I mean, it does have the point of the maple leaf, but you see how it's much more, it's nuanced and this is actually rounded. If you get very, very close, you see that it's rounded at the end and doesn't have that very clear point. So if you take a look at sugar maple leaves, it's just a little bit rounder at, at the point of each of these lobes. So that's one distinguishing feature. And certainly what gives it a uh, not as much of an edge, it has it just leafs out a lot uh, later than some than the Norways do. And so it has a, just a much shorter growing season. And just imagine that the Norway just has a jump start on the growing season. And the leaves are just much, much bigger, or tend to be broader and bigger than in sugar maple. Here we're looking at the bark of a sugar maple. And you can see that compared to the Norway maple, um, it just doesn't have that like deeply grooved pattern to it. It's a little scalier. You can see that it's just not quite as geometric and, and as easy to follow as with Norway maple. Here's a look at another type of maple. Uh, this is a native maple that we have in our region. This is red maple. There's a couple of reasons why it's called red maple. We're taping here at the beginning of May and you can see that its seeds actually have like quite a reddish color to it. Um, and in the fall, you'll notice that the leaves that you're seeing just starting to grow now on this tree um, will turn a nice red in the fall. Um, and that's some distinguishing characteristics of the red maple. Take a closer look at these seeds. Not only are they red, but you'll notice that the angle on them is actually much different from the Norway maple seeds. So Norway maple seeds, if you think of these as legs and pointing down, two legs pointing down, the Norway maple seeds almost look like they're doing a split, almost very close to 180 degrees. The sugar maples, on the other hand, are a little bit um, less of an angle, maybe between 60 and 120 degrees. But these red maples that you're seeing right here um, probably have the most acute angle at about 50, 60 degrees between, between the two nodes. And again, these are winged seeds that you're seeing here. So looking for that reddish shape, more of an acute angle to the wing seeds seeds and uh, the other distinguishing characteristic is unlike Norway maples which have the very clear deep uh, much larger leaves which are five lobes the red maple tends to have three lobes and the leaves are going to be much much smaller so yes this is at the beginning of the growing season and these red maple leaves will grow out a little bit more but they're pretty much going to hold this uh, three lobed shape to it uh, at least most of the trees um, in this area that are red maples so those are just some distinguishing characteristics from the norways